All right, welcome to ZBrush, and let's get right in there. So when you first start up ZBrush and you've got a vanilla install, this is probably what you're going to be greeted with. Right off the bat, you're going to have the ZBrush home page. What I like to do is go up here to this gear icon, say only show me if news has been updated, go ahead and exit out of this, and then click this little X button there. If you ever want to get that back, you can go right up here to this home page button in the upper left hand corner. And the second thing you're going to see is this light box. Uh, essentially, if you just click in here and drag, you can go through and it automatically defaults to the project. So you can go through here, uh, project tab, I should say. So here's all of our projects. We can go in here and we can look at tools and brushes. The only problem with this is if you're brand new to ZBrush, uh, these don't really mean a lot to you just yet. But we'll go ahead and explain that to you in this very first video. And by the way, this very first video is probably going to be the hardest video you're going to have to watch. The good news is once you've learned the basics of file management in ZBrush, the rest of it's easy. So let's talk a little bit more about that. The first thing I'm going to do is hit the comma key in my keyboard or go up here to the light box button and just click that. Now you're going to see when I hover over the light box, it's going to say uh, the comma key is the hot key for that. In fact, if you hover over any of these interface buttons, you're going to see there's a hot key association. So scale is E, move is W. So if you hit W, E, R, you'll go to move, scale, and rotate. If you hold down control over any button, you're going to see a little pop-up menu that shows you even more information. So when you go in here to a menu and you see something that's kind of cool, you can hover, hold down control and it'll go ahead and tell you more information about that. Let's go ahead and get out of those uh, rotate modes. We'll go back in here to draw. So you're going to see you can draw and then you can also move, scale, and rotate. So we'll put it back here on draw, which you can see the hotkey for that is Q. And then once you have that selected, you can go through here on your document uh, and you can start drawing things. Now this is kind of cool. And there's some cool stuff you can do in 2.5D mode, but this probably isn't what you're looking for. When you're thinking about ZBrush, you're probably like, hey, how do I get an object in here and how do I start sculpting? Well, right now what we're doing is we basically have the simple brush selected over here. And now we're talking about menus. So here's the tool menu here. You can also see it's right here. So here's the tool menu in this top menu section here. You click tool, and you see it disappears from over here and it shows up over here. You're also going to see a little divider right here. So if I double click these two arrows, it's going to close that little section and open it. You're also going to see on the other side uh, another little divider. So again, you can double click these dividers to close and open them. By default, the one on the right is going to be open and your tool menu is going to be docked. So how you dock a menu, you see this little white button right there in the corner. If you click that, it'll get rid of that menu. If you want to get it back, just go up here to this menu, grab that white dot and just drag it right on over there. In fact, you can make, in fact, you can dock multiple menus. We can go in here and say, take the stroke menu and grab the white dot, put it right underneath. And if you don't want that menu, just click that little white circle there. So we've got the tool menu docked over here. We've got a mess on our canvas. And I'm going to be using the word canvas and document interchangeably. It's the same thing. So we've got some scribbles on our canvas here. And we have the simple brush selected in our tool menu palette. So this is our tool palette. It says our current tool is the simple brush, and that's the default thing that's going to be selected in ZBrush. If you click that, you're going to see we have a quick pick, and these are recent things that you've used in ZBrush. Underneath that, you're going to have 3D meshes, and these are going to be your primitives and also Z spheres, which we'll get to. And underneath that, you have your 2.5D brushes. This is kind of what we're using to scribble on our document. You're going to see simple brush is selected. So 2.5D brushes, we're going to leave alone for now, and we're going to go back up here, and we're going to talk more about these 3D meshes, because these are the objects that you can use to start sculpting or creating 3D assets in ZBrush. If you want to get out of this section here, just hover your mouse over the document, and it'll go ahead and just automatically close out of that menu. So again, just tap over here, you have access to this, and then if you just move your mouse out of that area, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and closes it for you. Now you're going to notice we have two simple brushes over here. Here's the simple brush, and then here's a bigger simple brush. Well, this isn't really a bigger simple brush. This is just showing you that this is your palette, and you have simple brush selected. If you go through here and click alpha brush, now you're going to see there's a small simple brush, a small alpha brush, and then your big palette. So in your palette, this is the one you have currently active. And if you go over here and start painting, this is painting with the alpha brush. Click the eraser brush. Now you're going to have an eraser brush. And you're going to see it keeps putting more and more little versions down here. Those are just recently used. So the more things you click in here, the more it's going to kind of stack these options underneath here. This is just allows you for some quick access to those recently used brushes. If you don't want to see those, you can click this little R button right here, 
and then I'll go ahead and clear those out. Doesn't delete them, they're still available in here, uh, but you just don't have to see them. Now we've made quite a mess on our document here, so let's go ahead and hit Control N, and that's going to clear our canvas. So now we got a nice fresh canvas right here uh, for us to create on. Now again, we want to sculpt in 3D, let's say we want to sculpt a head. So how we can do that is we can go back in here to the palette. Right now it says colorized brush is selected. And let's say instead of a colorized brush, I want to grab one of these 3D meshes. Now just so I can talk about orienting yourself in ZBrush space, and also maybe a little bit of navigation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this arrow 3D primitive, and that's going to select the arrow 3D primitive. Now your first instinct is probably to go over here in your document and click and drag. And if you keep doing that, you'll just keep dragging instances of your selected primitive. And that's cool. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. That's kind of neat. Uh, but again, probably what you want to do is manipulate that tool. And right now, again, we're just making a mess on our canvas. So let's go ahead and hit Control N one more time. And this time I'm going to take this arrow 3D and I'm going to drag this out. Now you're going to notice over here we have drag rec selected in our stroke. If for some reason you don't, like say you're in a weird state and you've got like dot stroke or something, just go over here and choose drag rec. I'm going to hit Control N one more time. I'm just going to drag this object out of my canvas. And the next thing I'm going to do is right up here next to draw, remember when we did Q, W, E, R? Q is draw mode. You're going to see right next to that is edit mode. In order for me to start manipulating this object, the first thing I need to do is click edit. If I don't, and I click and drag on my canvas, I'm just going to make more copies. However, if I go up here to edit mode, now when I click in my document, I have access to this one object right here. So if I click and drag on my document, you're going to see it's going to rotate that object around. Now, I still have a mess on my canvas here, but again, if I want to clean that up, it's hit Control N. And now my canvas is nice and clean. And now when I click on my document, I can go through here and just rotate around. So great, we have an object on our canvas here and we're able to click in our document with our tablet, pin, or your mouse, left mouse button, and just click and drag and you can rotate around your object. Now as I'm doing that, and probably you've noticed this before, you have a thumbnail view up here and you had a cam view over here. Now this cam view you can use to orient yourself in space. So you're gonna see if I rotate this arrow so it's pointing up, you're gonna see the head is also pointing up. And if I click and rotate this arrow around, now the head is pointing forward. So essentially that's telling us this is the front of our object. And then this down here is the bottom. If we wanna see that a little bit better, we can go over here and we can click on this floor grid or we can do shift P. And again, if you hold down control, that'll give you more information, not a whole lot in this case. So we'll go ahead and click that floor grid here. And now you're gonna see if we click and drag in our document that we have a blue line on our floor that points forward, a red line that points left to right, and you can't really see it, but there's inside of here there's a green line that points straight up and down. So while we're navigating, uh, we can just again click, either left mouse click or just push your pin to the tablet, and I would say if you're going to be using ZBrush, get a tablet, you're going to need the pressure sensitivity for a lot of the brushes, and it's really more built around using a tablet, so I would strongly consider getting a tablet. So from here on out, I'm probably going to talk more about tablet functionality than I am like mouse clicking functionality. So you can see as I click and drag in the document, I'm tumbling around my object. And if I hold down shift, that's going to snap it to the front view. If I start clicking and dragging my document and start going over here so, to, so we're looking at this side where the red line is, and again our head is turning to the left, so we're looking at the left side of our object. If we hold down shift, it's going to snap to the side. And if we keep going around, we hold down shift, it's going to snap to the back. Hold down shift, we can snap to the top. Go down here, hold down shift, snap to the bottom. Now you can also use, in this instance, this cam view, you can actually click on this blue button and that'll make it forward. You can click on the red button. If you click on it twice, it'll go left to right, top to bottom, front to back. Now not all cam views will have that and you can do custom cam views if you'd like. But for right now, we're just gonna talk about orienting yourself in space with that camera view. Now over here on the left, you're gonna see this is your thumbnail view. You can actually click and drag on that. You can make it bigger or smaller. And this is just a way for you to evaluate your silhouette while you're working. So while you're over here sculpting, you can see if your silhouette's working up there in the upper left-hand corner. Now we're not gonna to get too heavy into the functionality of either of these right now. We're just kind of getting acclimated to the space, but since they're there, I figured I'd go ahead and bring them up. 